They say podcasts are going to replace books. I don't know about that. But I do think TRS clips will assist your learning process. Is the Cold War still on? There's a new Cold War on now. It's Cold War 2.0. Between the US would like the world to be either unipolar or bipolar. Ideally, they want a bipolar world. With them at, as, the, as one pole and China as the great super villain on the other pole. As long as the, there's a big villain, the Americans have a good role to play in the world. They position, position themselves as the, as the global super cop, as the, as the keeper of the global morality, as the good guys. And they always need a bad guy. So they would like the world to be either unipolar, that they only rule, or there's a big super villain apart from them, which is China. But as of today, we have a multipolar world. As long as Russia is not destroyed, and as long as India keeps rising, we will have a multipolar world. Mm -hmm. As long as the French have an independent foreign policy, independent of the US and independent of NATO, they, there's going to be a multipolar world. So that's where we are today. This is like that line from Batman that says that you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. So if USA was in charge of a unipolar world, it would suddenly become the big daddy and maybe people would point fingers, people would call it out. But as long as there's a rival for the US, the branding automatically becomes, listen, we're the protectors of the world. As long as you control the media, as mm. long as you control social media, you can censor some things. As long as you have that power, you can set any narrative you want. Mm. So for the longest time, for the for like two decades, you had a proper unipolar world. The US was the only power that was in place. And everyone thought that communism is over, the iron curtain, curtain has fallen, and the world will be great now, forever after. Mm. But that's not quite how it went. Mm. How did it go, Mr. Chavda? <laughs> that's that's a topic for the next episode. Lots to talk about when it comes to America. Again, disclaimer, if you're an American watching this, uh, sir, myself, we've both lived in your country. We're admirers of America. These are geopolitical conversations. Geopolitics is often not a reflection of the average everyday American and it's supposed to be viewed, listened to and understood from a very objective perspective. Uh, all in all, the bottom line for the Cold War was people's egos went crazy and scientific advancement went crazy. Probably money got transferred from lots of places to lots of other places. But how would you remember this phase of history looking back? It's part of a big cycle. Okay. It's something that's always been happening. But as technology advances, the consequences are larger and it's it's... It spreads over a global scale. Mm. Now that we, ha we have transportation at this scale, we have airplanes that can transport us from place to place in a very short period of time. When you have instantaneous, near instantaneous communication, that's when every conflict becomes global. Mm. So as technology advanced, the scale of warfare and conflict also advanced. Mm. Now every conflict is possible more or less global in scope mm. because everybody has an opinion, everybody is weighing in on that and either you're with us or against us or whatever. That sort of attitude exists from the US side. So that's what we are saying. So it's part of a bigger cycle. I just want to end this particular episode by reminding people that the last episode on the world wars, when we had to begin talking about the reasons for the world wars, we had to dial back about 100 years prior to World War II, roughly. Keep in mind that it's only been about 70 years since the 1950s, which is when the Cold War began. And maybe the Cold War could be one of the causes for World War III. Of course, we don't wish that. But maybe that's what you mean by a larger cycle in some ways. Yes, I mean, we are a violent species. We, Our history is a history of warfare. Look at the past 10,000 years of, of human history. It's war after war after war. It's about conflict. It's about expansion. It's about gaining territory, gaining power, gaining prestige. It's a never ending cycle. We had a we had a period of relative calm and peace. We had wars, of course, in that. We had coups, we had uh, overthrows and whatnot. But relatively overall, after World War II, there was a reasonable, reasonably calm period. It may not last long if things continue the way they are continuing right now. Mm. Which is why it's very important to know everything about and understand everything about the American political system, which does influence the rest of the world, which is a topic for the next episode. Thank you. Chowda sir, this was fantastic once again. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this clip. If you want to learn more about this topic, we've curated a playlist just for you. And here's a link to the whole episode.